In lab, you guys were looking at what happens when you add thermal energy to a substance. And not surprisingly, when you add thermal energy, it gets warmer. However, there were a couple things that you may have noticed. Um, if you heated up 100 grams of water and 200 grams of water, and you started them both at the same temperature, and you were adding energy to them at the same rate, the 100 grams of water heated up faster than the 200 grams of water. But both of them stopped heating up once they got to the boiling point. For us, this is probably a little bit less than 100 degrees Celsius because we're not at sea level. Well, our pressure is a little bit lower. If we were at sea level, that would be right around 100 degrees. Okay? So we know that the amount of matter determines how fast something heats up. You then also redid this experiment with vegetable oil and water, and you saw that vegetable oil also heats up pretty quick, uh, faster than water. So what's going on there? Does that mean the vegetable oil is getting more energy than water? Well, no. Okay, it just turns out that the vegetable oil is less able, less able to store thermal energy. Okay, now what we do is, when we're talking about thermal energy, we actually are talking about thermal energy gained or lost by an object. So we were adding thermal energy to the oil and the water. We were removing it when we let it cool down. So we actually give that a name. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy the transfer of thermal energy. So when we can talk about how much heat a substance gains or loses, it's much harder to talk about how much total energy something has, but measuring the amount of energy transferred, that's pretty easy. Okay, so the transfer of thermal energy is called heat, and because it is a unit of energy, it is measured in joules, Okay. Uh, and generally speaking, the more heat you transfer into something, the greater its temperature will be, and heat flows from hot to cold temperature flows from hot to cold. Okay. Uh, so if we put two objects in thermal contact, which means they can transfer heat from one to another, uh, that thermal energy flows until they're the same temperature. So heat flows from hot to cold until equilibrium is achieved. Now, let's go back up to that thought with the vegetable oil and water. Vegetable oil is less able to store thermal energy. What that means is adding thermal energy to vegetable oil makes it change temperature a lot, whereas adding thermal energy to water doesn't cause it to change temperature a lot if we add the same amount. And so what we're talking about now is this thing called heat capacity, which is also called specific heat. Now, capacity refers to something's ability to store or hold something. So when I'm talking heat capacity, I'm talking about a substance ability to store heat. Water has a very high capacity to store heat. Uh, we can put 4.18 joules of energy into one gram of water, and that will only cause its temperature to change by one degree Celsius. So this is what we give this symbol lowercase c. It's called specific heat. The specific heat of water is actually 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So every temperature change of one degree Celsius requires 4.18 joules for every gram of water we have. Whereas vegetable oil, has a specific heat of two joules per gram degree Celsius. So the reason I like to think this as specific heat or how much energy it's stored, if we started with one gram of vegetable oil at 80 degrees, as it cools down to 20 degrees, it releases two joules, two joules, two joules for every degree Celsius. So uh, in this 40 degree temperature change, we have 80 joules of energy that it's stored or released. Whereas with water, if we did that, from 80 degrees to 20 degrees for one gram, we'd have four times 4.18, which is closer to 170 joules of energy. It has a much greater ability to hold energy. And so when it's cooling down, it gives off lots of energy. Uh, the reverse of that is also true. When you heat it up, it takes lots of energy. So it takes lots of energy to make water get warmer. Uh, it releases lots of energy when it cools down. Now, this actually allows us to figure out how much thermal energy something has gained or lost. And this is the heat equation. The amount of thermal energy gained or lost by an object is equal to its mass, the amount of matter present, times its change in temperature, delta T, times however much its specific heat is. So this is C for specific heat. Change in 
thermal energy, uh, heat gained or lost, M delta T C. Now you can gain and lose thermal energy. So if your change in temperature is negative, you lose heat. If your change in temperature is positive, then the object has gained heat. Uh, there's a table of specific heats in your book. You can look these up on the internet, and they'll sometimes come in different units. Joules per gram degree Celsius is common, but it is not uh, our kilogram. Um, unit of measure. So sometimes you'll also see this in joules per kilogram degree Celsius or joules per kilogram Kelvin. Changing from degrees Celsius to Kelvin doesn't matter since a change in one degree Kelvin or one degree Celsius is a change of one Kelvin, uh, but changing from grams to kilograms is a thousand times change. So you got to pay attention to that. Usually we will be using grams. Um, water has an incredibly high specific heat, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now, what you guys might uh, be interested in is how is this related to uh, calories? And it turns out a long time ago, um, back when we were still figuring out that matter is made of atoms and heat is a form of energy, we didn't know heat was a form of energy. And there was this guy named Antoine Lavoisier who did a lot of good chemistry, but one of the things he did was he convinced everybody that substances that are warm have an extra fluid in them. This fluid he called caloric. Okay. Caloric was his thermal energy thing, and he said and things that are warm have lots of caloric as they cool down, that caloric flows out of them, and they have less of this, whatever it is. And that gives us our modern term calorie, which actually does refer to energy. This is a unit of energy. So when you're looking at the nutritional content of food, and it tells you something in calories, although it uses capital C for kilocalorie, it's actually telling you how much energy is in there. And it turns out, one calorie is equal to the amount of heat needed heat needed to raise one gram of water one gram H2O H2O by one degree Celsius okay? so one calorie is actually the same thing as 4.18 joules per gram or 4.18 joules so 4.18 joules equals one calorie so as water cools down from you know whatever 25 degrees Celsius to zero degrees one one calorie of energy comes out of it for every uh, change in temperature of one degree Celsius. 4.18 joules or one calorie comes out all the way up until all the way down until zero. Or if you're heating it up to 100, it takes one calorie of energy for every degree, or 4.18 joules for every degree per gram that you change this thing. Now, once you actually get to a phase change, then this actually goes out the window because once this started boiling, you notice the change in temperature was zero. It hit that boiling point and it stopped changing. And it will remain there until all of the water boils and then the vaporized water can get hotter again. So there's actually this other thing that you guys are investigating in the lab of what's going on during a phase change. It is still gaining energy, but that energy is not going into increasing the kinetic energy of the particles. Rather, it has to go into the potential energy part. Remember, these particles in a liquid down here are attracted to each other pretty strongly, uh, and there are strong forces of attraction holding them together as a liquid. We have to overcome those forces of attraction to turn it into a gas, so that's what's happening during this phase change. That's why we get that plateau for a second. Now, there is one thing I want to do. I want to show you a uh, quick example problem on using the heat equation. So the amount of energy gained or lost, heat, uh, mc delta t. So let's say that we have, we're going to heat up water. Heat water from 10 degrees to 90 degrees. And it requires 30,000 joules of energy. How much water is heated? So to solve this problem, it's just a straightforward equation, right? Plug and chug. So the amount of heat, the change in energy, is equal to 30,000 joules. The mass, we don't know, it's unknown. The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Uh, and we know that the change in temperature is equal to 80 degrees. 90 minus 10 is 80 degrees. So then it's just 30,000 equals M 
times C times delta T. So this is equal to M times 4.18 times 80. And if we just run the calculation through here, 4.18 times 80 is 334. And 30,000 divided by 334 is 89.7. So M equals 89.7, uh, one, two, well, one, three, grams okay and it's grams because this was joules per gram degree Celsius now to see how that amount of energy affects something like um, iron and I believe iron I better I better look but I'm pretty sure iron has a specific heat of 0.449 uh, let me look that up real quick yeah iron has a specific heat of 0.45 joules per gram degree Celsius so if this same amount of energy is added to iron how much will its temperature change so if I have 30,000 joules added to uh, the same amount of iron so 89.7 grams of iron times uh, a change in temperature I'm not aware of times um, the specific heat of iron which is 0.449 or I'm going to go with 0.45 joules per gram degree Celsius so then I have 30,000 divided by the 89.7 divided by 0.45 which is 743 degrees delta T equals 743 deg uh, degrees Celsius so this thing gets quite a bit hotter now an easier way would have, to do that would have been 4.18 divided by 0.45 because that would tell me the ratio of the specific heats 4.18 divided by 0.45 is 9.2888 and then I could multiply that by this change in temperature times 80 uh, and I would get the same thing 743 degrees Celsius uh, as long as the mass worked out the same and the change in temperature was the same so uh, these are not difficult problems you're just using that heat equation but you should have a pretty good idea of what it means when we're talking about specific heat and how much energy is gained or lost when a substance is going through a temperature change.